which of course conventional science has always said was impossible. I was so certain that it worked when I applied for a patent, I didn't even build it. My patent attorney told me that nobody would believe me unless I built it. I built it, it worked exactly as the theory predicted. I have given my life for humanity. I stood against great odds, against the U.S. government, who has fought this tooth and nail, tried to keep it away from you. And many congressmen, 11 congressmen, introduced bills into Congress to issue this patent to see that it would be produced for hundreds of millions of people across the earth. And that's the quote from them. That there was a conspiracy by the U.S. Patent Office and named Thomas Penfield Jackson. It was an SOB uh, who stopped, tried to stop this technology. Norman Wootton is another free energy inventor who has come up against the Patent Office of America. In December 1994, myself and Joel McLean presented to the world a device known as the MRA. The MRA produces more output energy than the energy necessary to drive the circuit. It has been independently tested and verified by six different agencies with the final output figures as being 256 times more energy out than energy input. This information was provided through the National Security Agency, who we strongly suspect at the 11th hour caused the patent to be denied at the patent office, rejected with no explanation as to the reason for rejection. It's hard to believe, you know, here we are surrounded by the clouds and the mountains and, you know, the sky, and we're surrounded in a sea of energy. Dan Davidson, who has degrees in both physics and mathematics, believes the pyramids of Egypt hold the secret to free energy, and he has written a book that describes how certain shapes attract energy from the atmosphere, with the pyramid shape being the most efficient. But he too claims to have been sidelined by the Patent Office of America. There's a thing known as a uh, classified patent system, which hardly anybody knows about. And every time you apply for a patent, it goes through a screening by someone from the Department of Defense here in this country as well as other countries. And if this device has any kind of uh, defense-associated in, uh, interest, they can classify the, the, the information, the patent, and tell the inventor to go pound sand. Free energy, uh, the nature that we're talking about, would be a very disruptive technology, at least initially. It would put out of business many people who uh, make their living and make their profit from conventional energy sources. Sooner or later, though, the, the transition from the conventional to the free has to take place, simply because we're running out of conventional fuels. There is no argument from mainstream science that we are running out of gas, oil, and coal, the fossil fuels that have so polluted our Earth. However, the only alternative conventional science has thus far come up with is nuclear power with all its dangers and pollution consequences. And yet there are other sources of energy that while they may not be the complete solution, they must surely be worth investigating. Around the turn of the century, eminent British scientist Lord Kelvin said that radio has no future, heavier-than-air flying machines are impossible, and x-rays are a hoax. So much for conventional science. It turns out that all of the world's thunderstorms are charging the ionosphere, and if you put up an antenna maybe 30 feet, 50 feet tall, you can run this motor anywhere on the Earth and it'll just run forever as long as there's thunderstorms somewhere. And we can simulate a thunderstorm with a Van de Graaff machine here. The, here's our artificial thundercloud. Puts out maybe 300,000 volts. So if I connect myself in the circuit, the motor runs. So here's free energy that could be used all over the world. Plug it into the sky. You could harness electrical energy from a cloud and run a small motor with it. But the problem is that a lightning strike occurring could fry the motor and possibly you with it. Maybe I am dreaming.
but I can see it run. Why am I obsessed with these non-round wheels? Wobbly wheels that don't wobble. I can justify it and say, I'm, oh, I'm trying to do toy research, but that's not the real answer. It's just, I'm fascinated. We had a real neat experience with an uh, anti-gravity experiment. Uh, New Energy News uh, published an article about... One fascination common to many free energy devotees is anti-gravity as a source of free energy. But the killer application right now is Professor Gerbenikov from Russia. Well, what Gerbenikov did was he mounted a huge number of these bug wings and built it into a small platform. And the, the platform, he actually flew around Russia on. Uh, here's, here's the little handlebars. He would, it was kind of like a motorcycle handlebars. And he would manipulate these handlebars. And this column was hollow. And it would manipulate the bug wings that were built down into the inside of this platform. And he claimed that he was flying around at uh, almost a thousand miles an hour, up to a thousand miles an hour with this particular platform. Gerbanikov has since died, and we found out that he destroyed the platform a number of years ago. Is, uh, he felt that this technology would be misused uh, and probably had more problems to the environment. He was a very uh, strict environmentalist. He goes out and kills a hundred of these insects, rips off their covers, glues them to a board so they're all facing up. He drops a metal pin, the pin floats in the air over this, this board. He turns the board upside down, the board floats in the air. Now it's projecting down, so it's deflecting gravity. So he builds this levitating platform, and he said he used popsicle sticks, flat popsicle sticks, and he would take ten of these shells and glue them to the top of each of these popsicle sticks, put them all together, put a shaft down in the middle, and when he turns the, the shaft, all these popsicle sticks open like a Japanese fan. And he has motorcycle hand grips, so when he turns one hand grip, it opens the two popsicle sticks in the front. When he turns the other hand grip, it opens the two in the back. When he opens them partially, he floats up off the ground. When he opens them all the way, he goes up to a thousand feet in the air. When he wants to go forward, he half closes the two in the front, so he tilts like a surfer. Gerbenikov's flying bug machine may appear to some to be more science fiction than fact, but of course sometimes fact can be a lot stranger than fiction. You see, there's a, there's a, um, a difficult choice to be made here. You don't want to have these energies introduced too rapidly. You want them to be introduced at a rate at which they can be accommodated as the conventional energies are phased out. And this is a, a very delicate dalen, a dance that has to take place. Remember that material that they found down in Australia right. from that flying object that crashed? Yeah. I mean, that honeycomb matrix? Whether you talk about stuff from like the old Roswell crash to you name it, though they keep coming up with that same kind of structure. 25, 25 honeycombs per square inch. And that was the dimensions. So if you were to stimulate that electrostatically, you might be able to produce some kind of a coupling with the, the ether zero point energy to couple with gravity to cause levitation. New ideas are very frequently uh, generated by people who <clears throat> are very strange and it's very easy to reject their ideas just by virtue of their strange personalities. <laughs> Where is the bubble coming from? Maybe some people from the universe was coming here in the beginning there is one man who claims to have been visited by aliens who apparently taught him all the secrets of anti-gravity, perpetual motion and free energy. And so we are told, lest he forget anything, they planted a memory device in his head. I went to the doctor and he says, oh, he says, how the hell is that? Well, I says, it must be an implant. If you have an implant, you have to work according to that implant. The, those three beings are within me automatically. While I'm working, I don't think about my wife, I don't think about the house, I don't think about nothing except my work. David Hamill is a Canadian recluse. He is a brilliant carpenter and metal worker and is currently building his own free energy flying saucer on instructions, he says, from the aliens. Those three beings came from the planet Cladden. 
the other side of us. There's two, two planets. Earth, planet, and in between. What do you think is there in between? There's the ionosphere. You can't go to it unless you use granite. I wouldn't be surprised the little ship that took off from me is up there in pieces. I took pictures of that, and I only got six pictures that were good enough. Apparently, David Hamill's prototype had taken off on its own, and according to David, the Canadian Air Force are still looking for it. You can read everything in there. This is the floor with the stairway to go upstairs. <laughs> now. Colon therapy and an advertisement for Robinson's jam seem to have somehow got mixed up with the design for David's flying saucer. And here, in the center of the Great Pyramid, so David says, is where Saddam Hussein hid from the Americans. That's where Saddam Hussein has hidden all his power. Experiments carried out recently in Finland showed that under certain conditions spinning discs placed one on top of the other can create an anti-gravity field above them and so lift off from the ground. If anti-gravity can be made to work, the mechanism, the, the machinery for doing that would be a source of free energy. So sure, come on in. Inside here. Huh? Now, this cross carries negative and positive. You see it there, the magnet up above and the magnet here. Once placed on top of each other, David explains, the disks are kept apart by reverse magnetism using hundreds of these magnets, each one powerful enough to crush a finger. The magnets are slightly angled, causing the disks to spin. To start off with, you got to start fire. Fire, when you, you, all these wings are installed, it's a little bamboo stick. You know, you go through your teeth with a toothpick, bamboo made. You just put it there and put the other wing on it at the right height. And then the other wing, the same thing, three more toothpicks, only three, three toothpicks, because it floats. This is going on top. It's all granite. Just think about it. 